uh, Michael Brown, about uh, the one in Beverly, uh, St. Louis, you know, but two cops are assassinated in New York and you don't hear a thing. He puts out a memo. Sorry, guys, sorry, sorry to hear about the hear death of the cops. Were well, they white or black? White or black. <laughs> That's well. his memo. Not to say that he's prejudiced in any way. And mind you, I'm a, I'm a Democrat. Democrat. Over so am I. But you know, it reminds me, as I said to you uh, on Monday, it reminds me of uh, when ISIS beheaded that first American civilian and he came and uh, delivered a, a statement, you know, it wasn't even a press conference, but he made a statement and then he left for the golf course, you know, because then, then a half hour later you saw him in his uh, Bermuda shorts playing golf. So in this case, you know, uh, he's... Now, I don't begrudge him a vacation, don't get me wrong, but I would think that something like this deserves some sort of a comment. Listen, okay, was something the happened president. in... Uh, was it in England? Was something happened? Uh, the Prime Minister Ray was on vacation, or was it in England? Did it happen with the... Uh, yeah, he came back. He came back. You know, we're not asking for the president to come back, but I think he could be more sympathetic to the uh, hard-working policemen of this country. You know, and you know, there's a lot of... St you, know, you know, Democrats uh, like him and other Democrats will tell you 76% of the crime and people in jail are blacks. Is, is that about right, Mark? Uh, I'm not sure of the numbers, but I know there is a great percentage of black on black crime. But that's what they never tell you, that it's black on black. They will never mention it's black on black. They'll tell you... Well, no, they do say, when they were talking about stop and frisk, okay, they did say that the reason that most of the stops were in predominantly black and Hispanic areas is because most of the crime statistics are black on black crime. Okay, and they were trying to prevent that. So they, they did say that, but... That was not the know. politicians, that was the police department saying that. I'm talking about what the police, what the, uh, what Holder, the president is saying. They're forgetting to mention that most of these crimes are black on black, and is that the reason why they're in prison? I don't know. I can't say for sure, uh, you know, as far as politicians are concerned. Well, this hey, listen, but all you have to do, I mean, and you did it, you know, you go onto uh, Google and Google the statistics, and it'll tell you right there, you know, white on black crimes, white on white crimes, black on white crimes, black on black crimes. No, uh, that's not my point. My point was the politicians neglect to say, yes, the majority of people in jail may be minorities, but most of the crimes are committed against other minorities. That's my point that nobody talks about. You know, that, you know they're doing it to themselves. The minorities, unfortunately. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Right now. We've been on for 48 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't see a phone call yet. I don't think you will. You might hear a phone call, but I don't think you'll see one. Yeah, well, that's true, too. You're right. I don't think I want to hear one either. Cause I think this is the day. I don't think so. Day after Christmas. Well, you know, this is the. Yeah, this is post Christmas. Most of the stores are still open right now. Big sales day after Christmas. Big sales. Well, and a lot today, of returns. today is return day. But what most people do with the money that they get from the returns is they go out and spend it right there. So. Yeah. A lot of sales today. So, hang up. Hang up. Turn off your turn, off, turn off our show turn and look to the store. store. For all you know, we're uh, just broadcasting to the wind in space. Well, you know, again, I have to remind you, as I remind the audience, this is a uh, it's a blog talk radio, and uh, it's a pod. A pod are meant to be listened. To whenever it's convenient to you, and uh, 
If anybody's if actually anybody's listening to us live, it's a bonus to them and to us. But most people do the blogs off the air, and then they just post them at certain times. With us, you are privileged to hear us live if you so choose to. One of the few. Because we are quick with it and we can respond in a second to any situation. We don't need to have a cue card in front of us or a written script. That's very true. We, we don't have uh, teleprompters, we don't have cue cards. Uh, everything develops right on the spot as you hear it. Remember, you heard it here first. Was, the it, uh, was that WINS on the radio used to say that? You heard it here first or something? On AM radio in New York? At the same time. You really, you could probably, by, if you just listen to us for five minutes, you realize that there's nothing written here. You know, it's like yes, when we uh, keep trumpering and going hamana, hamana, hamana. Speaking of hamana, 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 did you know that... Uh, Along with the Twilight Zone Marathon on uh, New Year's Eve, there is also a Honeymooners Marathon. Humana, humana, humana. When uh, Norton teaches Ralph how to golf, he says you have to know how to address the ball. Do you remember that, uh, Rev? You have to address him or dress him? Address the ball. Hello, Hello ball. ball. And how are you today, Ball? And then uh, when they were on uh, television doing the commercial, the Chef of the Future. That one I don't know. Oh, you're kidding. Well, it's on because I checked out a bunch of the episodes, so you just have to... Uh, Check it out on uh, the uh, cable uh, cable guide. You know, one of the things that uh, when we first started the Rebellious Rev and the Doc, we used to uh, do a little bit of reviewing of uh, different uh, uh, what do you call it? The religions. And I was running through the, uh, some religious things I was reading. And it seems and like, the, like uh, the uh, Pastafarians Pastor are getting more popular in the United States. States. Well, it's the only religion where you can actually eat what you preach. Yeah, okay, what you are is uh, they, believe they, believe they believe that the, the, the pasta, pasta monster, monster you know, controls, everything. controls everything. And, and they have a very have a easy, easy uh, uh, ordination. ordination. To become a Pastafarian. I'm almost afraid to ask. It's too easy, Mark. If you read about them, you say, okay, you read about us, now you can be, now you're a Pastafarian. That's it. At the end of it. And for $20, and you become an ordained minister with your own Pastafarian ID. And, uh, and uh, then you can then you perform a Pastafarian uh, uh, wedding. wedding. Imagine that Imagine going that to, the, to the, uh, the uh, county clerk. And, uh, and uh, what, religion what religion is this? Is this uh, uh, I'm a Pastafarian. I don't know if they ask about religion. I think the, uh, the only thing they ask is... Um, well, obviously, they need your social security number. No, I'm you know. talking about the gentleman who conducts it. The clergy has to fill out an application. Well, isn't he usually a, a justice of the peace? He's like a judge. So no, he's, but he's also a priest. The rabbis do weddings. And they have to fill out an application. It was in New York, in New York City, with this kind of clerk. And you have to give them your ID, and you, you have to tell them what religion you are and what you're doing. And, you know, and they have to approve it. it. Okay. And so if you're a Pastafarian, you have to show them your ID as a Pastafarian. And the idea is that a Pastafarian is a uh, 
bunch of sp uh, spaghetti with the two eyes popping out. Look, I wonder if anyone actually takes it seriously. I would sooner be a dude. Hey, there, there you go. The dudes also. They're uh, the religion. Judaism. Judaism, just like Judaism, they're all not not Judaism, but Judaism. I, I said just like Judaism. I I I know. They are all legal religions as seen by the Constitution of the United States. That's how the rebellious Reb makes a living. Huh? He's a, he's a he's a door to door preacher. I make a living. He's like. <laughs> He's like the Dugan's bread, bed, bread man from back in the day. I remember living in Brooklyn. The Dugan's man used to knock on the door once a week, selling donuts and bread. Just like the milk man, just like the seltzer man. All these things that this generation knows absolutely nothing about. That's right. I sell milk at the same time as I preach, knocking on people's doors. Except I don't have an ice box to walk around with the doors to have. The, uh, one of the things that I, you know, that you'll probably never see us do is ask for money. Unless I'm ready for vacation, then I, then I tell people where I'm willing to do weddings. Well, Sid, I didn't, I didn't catch that. I said, one of the things that they'll, they'll never hear from her, us as being a religious show, us asking for money. For money. Oh. Ex except for when I want to go on vacation. And then I offer my services free to marry people in certain locations. No, you got to understand, we ask all the time, but people laugh in our face, you know. I mean, say, we, we don't get anything. I put it this way, we don't, collect, we don't get anybody in our pockets for doing this. But anyway, but... Nothing, that's, that's right, our pockets have holes in it. But I would like to say, uh, there is a... If you do want to contribute to something, contribute to a good, worthy cause. Uh, St. Joseph's Hospital, to me, sounds like a wonderful cause. I really don't know too much about it, but I know it's for kids. And anybody that goes there and has a illness probably has cancer. Well, I heard you like St. You like St. Jude's because of Marlo Thomas. No, there's you another know. one much cuter to talk about it. Marlo Thomas is nothing. nothing. They had who was it today? The girl from the, girl from, uh, from, uh, the Spanish girl. The Spanish girl. It's really hot. It's really hot. Modern family. Modern family. Oh, uh, Sofia Vergara. Yeah, she was on talking about it. Wait, we have a phone call. Let's see who's um, calling. I'm almost embarrassed to ask. I don't know. Good evening. You're on the air. I want you to know I just woke up, guys. So I called and said, uh, let me call in and say hi real quick. How was your Christmas? It was very good. That's why I just woke up. Well, that's, that's a good thing. And how are you feeling? I'm feeling... I, I have to say I'm feeling 100% better. You really do. You I mean, you're telling your voice. You sound much better. Well, except that I'm exhausted, but, yeah, um, this, this is a really good weekday. Over the weekend, I rested, and Monday was, you know, here or there, but it started to get better, and today, um... You know, just to actually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I was like on my game. I was on top of the world. Uh, it must have been because you met uh, His Eminence. <laughs> maybe, or maybe for the maybe for the simple fact that on uh, when Wednesday morning at four, it was four o'clock in the morning. I was in Toys R Us shopping. They were still open? Were they open 24 hours? Yeah, they were, actually they were open to 9 p.m. yesterday or 9, yeah, something like that. Well, I forgot who I was talking uh, to, a friend of mine, but I said, it's so much easier when the kids are older because you can give them money and gift cards. 
But I said, I remember being on those lines at Toys R Us and I used to hate it. This time 